Hey everybody, this is George Hansen with the Myrtle Beach Bible Bank, and I just want to share a little bit of encouragement from uh, the Word of God uh, with you today. Um, God is so good to give us His Word, and it is so encouraging, and so I just want to share with you uh, a little bit from Scripture today to hopefully encourage you to continue to walk forward in your faith um, with God. Uh, and you know, um, we all face storms in life that are uh, a reality. Uh, we face storms with uh, finances, relationships, um, maybe in the workplace, maybe in school, um, you know, all aspects of life. At some point or another, we have, uh, metaphorically, if you will, um, experience storms. Of course, we also experience storms in um, the, the presence of nature, of course, with wind and rain and thunder and lightning and snow and ice and all sorts of things that happen out in the environment that um, are negative, um, but thankfully they don't last. Thankfully that most often uh, after the storm passes, the sun comes out and is shining and it's a beautiful day. Uh, and I am thankful that God uses the storms in our life to teach us and to also encourage us um, because through the storms and through the, the aftermath and the lessons learned in the storms, we see God's goodness. We see grace, and we also see how we can improve so that the next time the storm comes around, that we won't be as greatly affected by it um, when it came around the first time. And so I'm so thankful that God teaches us, and He wants to continue to teach us and grow us in faith in Jesus Christ, both myself and for you. He wants to continue to grow you through His Word, through the promise and the activity of the Holy Spirit within your life, and also with uh, each other, with the body of Christ. Uh, and so be encouraged that you are continuing to grow. And just don't give up. Don't give up on faith in Jesus. Don't give up on the ultimate victory that God has over Satan, over all of the lies, over all of the trouble, over all of the storms. Jesus is greater than all of them. God is greater than all of them. Has it said First John chapter 4, verse 4, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Greater is the Holy Spirit who is in you, the power of God who is in you, than the power of the Antichrist operating within the world. Amen. Say that over your lives and continue to do so every day. You will see the victory of God. It is going to happen. Praise Him. Thank you, Jesus. I want to get into the scriptures and I want to focus in the book of Matthew, chapter 14. And this is when Jesus walks on the water. This is a, a powerful story right here, my brothers and sisters. And so I'm just going to read it. And it's Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. And this is right after Jesus performs the miracle of feeding um, the 5,000, uh, where he takes five loaves and two fish and lifts them up to heaven and says, Thank you, God, for what you have given me. Thank you that this is sufficient, and thank you, Lord, uh, that I may feed everyone here today. And everyone was fed, and there were even leftovers. And so that just happened. And so, picking up in Matthew chapter 14, verse 22, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer! It is I! Do not be afraid! And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. And so Jesus shows us right here that he is above storms. He is above 
all of the elements. He will, in fact, use those elements uh, to come to us, to teach us, to love us, to grow us, to show us his mercy and his compassion. Um, it says right there in the scriptures that uh, Jesus was walking on the sea. He was walking on the sea. He walks on the water. Isn't that encouraging to know that Jesus is above all of the elements? Uh, we saw that earlier when Jesus calms the storm, that he says, peace be still, and the wind and the waves obey him. And so we see that demonstrated here of God's authority over the elements. There is nothing greater than God. And it says that then in verse 26. And so the disciples see him in the boat. Uh, and they, they, they cry out to him. They're fearful. Jesus says, do not be afraid. And Peter says, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus says, come. And Peter gets out of the boat and starts going to the Lord. Um, but what happens is Peter loses his focus on Jesus. He sees the waves. Uh, it says that the wind was boisterous and Peter was afraid. And then in that moment, through that fear, um, he begins to sink. And then Jesus, of course, saves him as Peter cries out to Jesus saying, Lord, save me. And Jesus does so. And so what does this say to you and I today? It says that the elements, the storms of life, they are a distraction. They are a distraction that Satan wants to use, our adversary wants to use, to try to pull and erode our faith, to try to take our eyes off of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and turn our eyes to Him and then to be overcome by fear and begin to drown. But remember, our God is greater. Our God is greater. And, and don't feel condemnation upon yourself. Don't um, feel guilty about giving in to fear. We all have done it. Uh, the storms can be very scary. They can be very scary. And sometimes we really just don't know what's going to happen. Uh, we don't know how we're going to make it through. But this is how we can respond in those situations. When we see and recognize that our eyes have turned away from our Lord, when they've turned away from our faith in God and the goodness of God and the sovereignty of God, we must do what Peter did. And Peter said, Lord, save me. That is your key. You say, Lord, save me. When you realize that your, your view, your focus has been turned away from God, say, Lord, save me. Say, Lord, save me. Turn to him now if you're in that place right now and you say, Lord, save me, just like Peter did in verse 30 of Matthew chapter 14. Say, Lord, save me. And what happens? Verse 31, immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Jesus desires to save you, to pull you out, and to grow your faith. Don't be discouraged. Peter didn't get discouraged. Peter kept walking with the Lord and eventually became to be one of the greatest leaders of the church after Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension. So don't give up. You too continue to grow up just like Peter did. God wants to do this through you and he wants to grow your faith. So turn to him and say, Lord, save me. And you will see God move in your life. You will see it. It's a promise. God will not leave us nor forsake us. One other observation to make um, before I close for today is that in the beginning of the reading in Matthew chapter 14, it says that Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. So when Jesus gives a command of where it is that we are to go, we shall go and we shall also have faith knowing that God is able to bring us to the other side just as he did with the disciples in this passage here. So let us continue to worship him as the Son of God for that is who he is. And Father, I just thank you for your love that you have for us. I thank you, Lord God, that you are forever with us, Lord God. And Father, may you continue to grow our faith, Lord God, that we may continue to grow, Father. And I thank you also, Lord God, that you teach us, Father God, that you don't just uh, speak words to us, Lord God, but you actually show us, Lord God. You give us experiences with you, Father God, that we may learn from, Lord God, that we may grow from, Father God. And ultimately, Lord God, you're drawing us closer to you that we may see who you are, Father God, within our lives, Father, and you grow us up into who you say that we are. And so may we just continue to grow in faith 
and out of love for you. And we thank you for your love and your protection, Lord God. And we thank you for your response, Lord God, that when we cry out to you, you respond. And so, Lord God, I just pray that you bring peace into my uh, brothers and sisters' lives right now of those who are in storms, Father God, that as they cry out to you saying, Lord, save us, that they see your sovereignty and they see your grace in their lives through the storms, Father God. And we praise you and love you in Jesus' name. God bless you all.